Hi, I'm Nick Pregnitz with Calibrated Power, home of DuramaxTuner.com. Now, ever since the first aftermarket upgrade turbochargers were available for light duty trucks, we've been talking to customers about turbo surge, what it is, and how to fix it. Turbo surge is characterized by distinctive bark or continuous fluttering noise that comes from the turbocharger due to high load and low engine speeds. When the compressor surges, it's losing traction on the air it's trying to compress. As it bounces off the surge line, boost pressure oscillates going up and down. You can see it on the boost gauge and you can hear it. Aside from being inefficient and annoying, it's also a good way to destroy a turbocharger. That's why it's important to adjust the tuning or the setup very soon so you can avoid surge in the future. If you're experiencing turbo surge, let's start with a visual inspection of the engine bay. We're looking for a dirty or clogged air filter, disconnected wastegate line. Also, you're going to want to scan the truck for diagnostics to see if there's any codes that would show a map sensor that's out of range or a VGT actuator position sensor that's out of range. Either of those two things can lead to the veins being closed up and excessive turbo surge. Boost leaks won't cause turbo surge. But boost testing the truck is always a good idea during the diagnostic process, and it'll improve the reliability of the system and any fixes that we make in the long term here. Most boost test kits start with the hot side intercooler pipe. However, today we're going to use the stealth boost test kit, which connects directly to the inlet of the turbocharger. Connecting the compressor side of the turbocharger like this ensures that we test the back seal around the compressor on the turbocharger, giving us the most accurate picture of the truck's ability to hold compressed air, which is of course essential to making power and operating reliably. In today's example, where we work through a solution for turbo surge, we're gonna set it up with a pretty common scenario. And that is the customer's recently upgraded the turbocharger, changed to a larger compressor wheel, and is working with the tuner to get the truck to run right. We're gonna take the truck out on the street, we're gonna put a load behind it, rather heavy load, and we're gonna tow it uphill, okay? And what that's gonna do is force the truck into low RPM operation at high load, and that's the worst case for turbo surge. So from there, we can demonstrate what numbers you need to collect as you're driving the truck that are gonna help your tuner work through a solution. If you wanna be really helpful to your tuner, there's a few questions that they're gonna ask that you can preemptively have answers to. One of those, what altitude are you driving at most commonly when the surge occurs? Second one, does the surge get worse or happen more frequently as, el as elevation changes? And the goal here really is to isolate what elevation causes the surge or what elevations the truck surges at or doesn't surge at. So the boost tables in the truck are broken up by altitude and we wanna narrow in on which group of altitude tables is misaligned. So if we're gonna focus on sea level, we're gonna focus on low altitude, mid-level altitude or high-level altitude, that'd be 5,000 feet or 10,000 feet. So if you're operating at 7,500 feet, you'll be between those two tables and the tuner will have to adjust both those tables. Next, we wanna narrow in on which driving scenario really forces the truck into surge. So is there an RPM range where the truck just really doesn't like, maybe 12, 1400 RPM, the truck just really doesn't like that. And from there, the tuner can put a cap on how much boost is available there, or they can help shift the truck out of that rev range at that load. So two things are gonna drive the truck into surge. We already talked about these, but boost and load. If the tuner can limit either of those at the RPM where surge is happening, then they can get you out of surge, improve the lifespan of the turbocharger, and improve your driving experience. Once you've determined that the issue is surging, and you've had that conversation with your tuner that they're willing to help you work through this, the first thing you wanna do, like we said before, is tell them what altitude you're operating the truck. Once they know the altitude, they can narrow in on which tables need to be adjusted as far as the boost and fuel limits go. Next, get a notepad. If you can't data log the truck, a notepad's the second best thing. Write down 1200, 1400, 1600, 1800, 2000, and 2200 RPM. Those are gonna be the RPM breakpoints for our limits. So what we wanna do is find out the maximum boost and maximum fuel rate that we can achieve at those RPM numbers before we push the truck into surge. Now remember, we don't wanna be into surge when we report those maximum numbers. We want to be just before surge. So it should be, the truck should be able to consistently hold that boost number without going into surge at 1200 RPM, without going into surge at 1400 RPM. And if you can write 23 PSI, 89 MM3, that's going to be very useful to the tuner as he goes in and adjusts those limits at that altitude to keep the truck out of surge. 
The easiest way to keep the truck at those RPM brake points is to have a load behind it and find a nice hill or grade and run it in high gear. Remember, don't needlessly push the truck into surge. It's something we want to kind of tickle the truck into, but anytime we push the truck into surge, it's hard on the turbocharger, it's hard on the bearings, and it's going to decrease the life of the turbo. Of course, a situation like this is always easier with two people. If you can have a friend or your wife record these numbers as you drive, it's going to make the whole situation that much simpler. That'd be my, re my recommendation. Also, stay safe. We've built a tune to demonstrate the scenario a customer might run into while lugging the truck and trailer up a significant grade without any built-in surge protection in the tune file. I remember here in Northern Illinois, it's sea level. We don't have a lot of big hills, but this truck was looked at beforehand. It's determined to have no boost leaks, no other mechanical issues. So we're gonna take it out on the street and demonstrate how to gather the information that your tuner will find useful. Okay, so you've taken the truck out on the street, you've logged it, or written down at least your RPM numbers and your boost levels and your maximum MM3 values that you, you've observed, where the truck feels comfortable, so it's not going into flutter, uh, and it's just, just on the cusp of it, right? So we don't, wanna, we don't want to be right on that surge line. Usually you can hear the turbocharger as it goes into surge. We wanna be you know, just a little bit before that. Um, and then we also made note of altitude. So in our case, the barometric pressure reading was 14, so that's sea level, our altitude here is about 600 feet. So this all computes. So as a tuner, what am I gonna do? Well, you give this information to your tuner and they should look and they should go uh, to the desired boost tables. And the reason we would go there is because the uh, turbocharger on this LLY is electronically controlled, meaning that the engine control module has control over how much boost it makes. And that how much boost it makes directly impacts its tendency to go into surge. If this was a wastegated turbocharger or a uh, fixed geometry turbocharger, meaning no electronic controls, then we'll use another method, and I'll show you that in a second. But on this truck, uh, the truck works off of desired boost tables, so it's going to try and achieve the desired boost table that it's looking up. Now in this case, we're going to look at desired boost level with EGR off, Charlie. And Charlie stands for sea level. If it was Bravo, it would be medium altitude, 5,000 feet. Alpha would be high altitude, 7,500 up to 10,000 feet and above. This is a Charlie example. We're at sea level. And our first RPM increment is 1,400 RPM. Now, if we follow this 1,400 RPM down, as these numbers on the side here on the left-hand side are fuel rate, so that is, you can see that is load. So the higher the fuel rate, the more load you're putting on the truck. You can see as you add load at 1,400 RPM, we're going to command higher boost levels. Now the, the boost level you'll see on the gauge would be this number, this 32.2, minus the number in the upper left hand corner, or minus barometric pressure. So 32.2 minus 14, 34 minus 14, or 20 psi. Now in our notes, we say 18 psi is where the flutter starts. So what we're going to do is, we're going to do the math. Uh, 18 plus 14 is 32. So really anything over 32 we know is going to put the truck into surge. And in our notes we saw that anything over 80 mm3 started to put the truck into surge. So that's interesting, 29.4 up to 32.2, and the truck is going to surge anything really past this. So what we can do here is, as a tuner, we can take this whole row and put 32. And what that's going to do is limit the command on our boost at 1400 RPM to 32 total, or 18 pounds of boost. Similarly, we'll go in the 1600 column, we'll do that math, uh, 21 PSI was the cusp of surge, so 21 plus 14 is 35. Anything over 35, or anything over 85 mm3, started to put the truck into surge. So a good way to get it out of surge is to not command over 35 pounds. There you go. 18. 1800 rpm again 26 plus 14 36 plus 4 40 okay so we don't want to command anything over 4 or anything over 40 psi total in order to keep the truck out of surge 
this seems probably somewhat redundant, but uh, this is the magic of tuning. And similarly, we'll do the 2000 column at 33. 33 plus 14 is 47. On the LOI, you can command up to 52 PSI total. Now, that's not, not including barometric pressure. Keep in mind the map sensor on an edge, or similarly, uh, because they use the wrong PID in those uh, scan tools, only reports up to 22 PSI. But the truck does have control of boost up to 37 pounds of boost. So, if we want to keep it under 47, we can go over here in this column, 47, enter, and that should keep the truck out of surge. Now we can do a little smoothing and cleaning up and, you know, whatever you want to do as a tuner to make this uh, look a little nicer. But that should keep the truck out of surge in the low altitude. You may have to do something similar in the medium altitude. And I'll give you a little trick here, and that's if you <clears throat> take these numbers, and so this 40, divide it by 14, that'll give you the pressure ratio. That pressure ratio is probably a similar pressure ratio that's going to cause surge at medium altitude and high altitude. So medium altitude, you can see you got 12 in the upper left and then 10 at high altitude. So uh, if you do the math on this, you know, your pressure ratio is probably going to be similar in the surge zone. So what if we don't have a variable geometry turbocharger? What if this is a S467 on this truck and it's going into surge or an Aurora 5000 or something like that? How do we then control it? Well, we can't command less boost. It's not going to work. There's nothing, no effective way to limit the boost on those turbochargers. So what we'd have to do is limit the fuel. And the best way to do that on the LOI is in this max injected fuel quantity table. Now what this table does is reference barometric pressure on the left-hand side, RPM across the top, and then these numbers are the maximum fuel rate allowed. Now, on our uh, test drive, we saw that at 1400 RPM, anything over 80 mm3, the truck was pushed into surge. Now, what we could do here is go 14, type 80 in there, sorry, 80, and that would limit the truck to 80 mm3 at anything over 14 psi barometric. Now, the reality is anything at higher altitude as you go up the left side here is also going to surge. So we probably want to make this whole column 80. And then as our customer gives us feedback from medium altitude or high altitude, we could come over here and adjust the slope of this table. And you can see naturally this table slopes down as altitude goes up. So less fuel allowed as altitude goes up. That's the 1400 column, the 1600 column. We would come in and limit to 85. The 1800 column, we would come in and limit to 89 because those are the reported peak MM3 numbers before the truck tended to flutter. 2000 RPM, 95 was the limit on MM3. So this will just keep the truck out of surge at, uh, at those RPMs. We'd probably want to smooth that in, you know, and shape it and do all the magic the tuners do. But either way, you have to either limit the boost or limit the fueling. That's the only way you're going to keep the turbocharger speed down and keep it from going on that surge line. We've made the changes. Now, what happens if we go too far? What happens if we take too much out of this table? Why don't we just, instead of pulling 2 PSI out at 1,400 RPM, why don't we pull 6 PSI out? Well, our, our potential here is to lose performance. <clears throat> so if we, if we pull more boost out, we're going to limit the truck's ability to make power. And if we do that, our, our customer, our driver, is going to continue to push the throttle to ask for that power, and the truck's not going to have the ability to lug there. Now, maybe that's a good thing, or maybe it's not, but there's a limit there to how effective the truck can be at 1,400 RPM. And if they continue to push the throttle, they're going to call for a downshift and go to a lower gear. So our goal as a tuner, our goal in getting this truck to run correctly and properly is to put it in a place where it can operate long-term and durably at 1,400 RPM sustained with a load. If we think that pushing the throttle further because we need more power should call for a downshift, great. If we think it should be able to make more power, then we should add a little bit more boost there and, and push ourselves closer to that surge line. If you haven't looked at these tables, they may be a little bit intimidating. Uh, if, if this is your first time, you know, don't, don't be scared of it. It's not, not anything crazy. 
Uh, this is something that most tuners should be fairly familiar with. If you give this video or this information to a tuner, they should be able to make these edits very easily. Um, you know, our goal here is is to make the truck run as as predictably and reliably and durably as possible while making the best power that it can in an efficient way. We want the truck to be safe, we want it to be nice to use, we want it to be nice to drive. This is an iterative process though. So what I mean by that is that we may have to make a couple other small adjustments here. So, you know, we're adjusting for low altitude. If you go up to medium altitude, things may change a little bit. And we can apply some of the stuff we learned in this, in this uh, example to medium altitude and to high altitude. But keep in mind that depending on how you drive the truck, the altitude, the air temperature, um, all those things can come into effect. And that's not even, uh, not even mentioning the potential mechanical issues that some of these trucks might have and need to be troubleshot. So just, uh, you know, be patient with your tuner. Uh, give them the, the clues they need to, to get the truck right, and I think you'll be, you'll be happy with the process. We've certainly enjoyed sharing this diesel knowledge with you. If you've enjoyed the content today, please like or subscribe our channel. I would appreciate it. I'm Nick Pregnance with Calibrated Power. See you again on Diesel Insights. Go, go, go.